So this is how you actually set the jig up. So I've got my parts separated. You know, I've got the bar here, so it's it's easy to manage. You know, you want to be able to adjust it. So don't get on your hands and knees doing this. So for example, this is a 28 inch door. Measure and be very careful how you measure. Like this is really, it's 29 and a quarter, but I'm gonna make them fit a 29 and 5 16. So 29 and 5 16 is what I need to set my jig up for. Now, these spreaders, the way they are, if you measure right here, see this bolt right, right on this outside edge. If you measure to here, see how it's 28 and 5 16 So that's your dimension. It's one inch, it's one inch smaller. The reason why is that the jig itself has these templates and the thickness of the templates is the same as the thickness of that bottom casting. But you can see where my finger's pointing. That little elbow that little corner piece of aluminum, that is a half inch wide. That half inch plus the half inch on the opposite side template accounts for that one inch. So, 29, or excuse me, 20, yeah, 29, 5 sixteenths. This should be 28, 5 sixteenths. And what you do, is you literally just adjust these until you get it perfect do it without those installed get it to exactly where you want it lock it down and then put in your spacer and if your spacer doesn't fit you have to adjust it get it right but once you lock it down don't move it just make your fine adjustment here i like to make it so that it's it's snug but it's not tight and these are exactly the same. And these are dead, dead, exactly the same. So you could actually just measure and then just space the next one out and seal it with your fingers. That would be another way to save time. All right, here's the process. What you do is take the jig, put it in the opening and check in the level you start and you just take the slack out. You don't like crank down on these. This, this, is, this is still a frame that you can distort if you over tighten anything. All you're gonna do is get it into position, use these top and bottom stretcher um, attachments to, and these bolts to maintain level plumb, whatever, and um, once that's good, then just take the slack out using these stabilizers. Now, the thing is, what you have here with this Jam Master sitting in the opening, you've just duplicated or replicated that door with a jam that you're gonna put in here. So that is how that door is gonna fit this opening. Um, if I struggled at all to get this thing, to get the Jam Master into the opening, I would find out where the framing is tight and I would literally use a persuader, okay? And I would tap that over wherever I needed to. You don't have to pound on it, but this will move it for sure. This is a four pound, Harbor Freight cheapo engineer hammer. It's basically a, a small sledgehammer. And I've got some my grip on the end to make it, you know, real grippy so that I don't have to, you know, when I'm tired, I can still hold it without a lot of effort. Now that that's ready to go, I'm ready to uh, do my Now I'm, I'm using door stop for the bigger gaps, but for the smaller gaps, which most of these are now, I'm using actually pine lattice. By the time you get to the last shim, you're ready to go. You just go back to the first one that you glued. 
and just go in the same order. Once you set up that laser line, you can see visually where the top of the doors are gonna hit across a group of doors like here in this bedroom. Secondly, um, you don't have to check the floor because bottom line is it's gonna be between that laser line on the left and where it hits on the floor compared to this one and the floor. When you cut those jams and it's gonna connect the line between those two marks and you remove three eighths of an inch for the door gap, you're gonna end up with a finished door that's ready to go. You don't have to get on your knees to do any of these. Now it hangs perfect. It's not ghosting. It's not trying to close by itself. On, on these doors, I've noticed these must be pretty cheap hinges that they're using. These are TM Cobb hinges. So they're just stamped. And I'll tell you something. The, the gap right here on, e on either side of the hinge was pretty hefty. Um, when I initially put up the door, it was making it bind here, even though the size of the jam was set correctly. And that's totally because of this, the hinge. So what I did was I pulled the hinge out, stuck my pry bar in there to get my, to get some space so it won't bind. And then the amount that the hinge was overlapped, I used my knuckle bender just on and I brought them into alignment, put the pin in, pulled it, and the door did not bind anymore. So, you know, there's a lot of moving parts when you're hanging doors. The knuckle bender is something I would, I would have on hand when you're in the process of installing the future. When you go around and label these doors, like this is seven, and you write seven on your pre-hung door, but what you also want to do is on the door framing, write in a marker. If this is like a 32 inch door, I mean, actually, and write it the same as what the Jam Master is. So if the Jam Master says 26, write 26 on this. As far as actually prepping the doors, the pre hung doors, I like to put them on their side, take my measurements from, remember I measured from the laser to the floor on both sides of each door. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a track saw with the blade all the way down and I'm cutting through the jam and through the door. Yes, through the door. What that does is that gives me a point of reference. The kerf mark is going to indicate where the floor is once I've cut. So now I've flipped the door over on the other side. I've made sure that I have a gap at the, at the top of the door, appropriate. I'm using an edge guide um, so that I know exactly where my saw is gonna cut. And I cut again all the way through the jam and through the door. And the idea then is and you notice I haven't bent over, I'm not on my knees, none of that. Now I'm going to pick up the door and I'm going to rest it on a platform. In this case, a couple Bora tables. You'll notice I did not unhinge the door. I flipped the door open and leaving the door still connected to the frame. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of 3 8 scrap material and all I'm doing is I'm registering that up against my kerf mark and I'm giving myself an indication mark of where I, I want to cut through the door to create a gap at the bottom of the door. You know, the door has to be shorter than the length of the jams. So the beauty of this is, look at this, track saw straight across the uh, door. I didn't remove it from the hinges. I make my cross cut. And now I've got a door that's ready to install. Another tip to keep in your arsenal is when you're dealing with floors that are different heights, like this tile floor in this bathroom, the door is going to swing over that. Um, but you can see the jam actually is on a lower level. 
So how you account for that is you measure your you measure your jam down to the longest point, which is the hardwood floor. And then you use, like in this case, I'm using a level with a how far out. And the how far out is going to tell me the thickness of that tile floor. And all I do is add that to my list. So when I cut the door, in addition to my usual 3 8 gap, I add the how far out amount as well.